Now we need to talk about the polar vortex. We need to talk about the stronger front that is coming in and on air meteorologists are starting to talk about it now. So that kind of gives me my cue that I probably should ramp up the messaging as well. Now there's a, a guy up in Oklahoma City that posted this morning that this could be the coldest cold front, the strongest cold front that we have seen since February of 2021. Well, you say that in Texas and you're gonna get a lot of people very nervous. I think he's really getting a little bit presumptuous up there. Of course, Oklahoma will be colder than we will be, but regardless, I think he's jumping the gun a little bit. I think he's hyping things up and you know how we feel about that around here. So this is 9 a.m. this morning. This is where things kind of stood. Again, as I've talked about, you can see that the colder air is still up in Canada, but if you notice where we showed uh, yesterday, the day before, it is already starting to surge a little bit southward. It's almost to Minnesota here. So yeah, the colder air, this sub-zero air up here is making its way southward. We have seen that split, that distortion in the polar vortex, and that will allow those colder temperatures to come down here. Now, here's the question. How far south will it go? How cold will it get? When will it get here? Well, those things are all very uncertain right now. I'll show you the differences between the two major models that I follow. This is the Euro model 12Z. This is looking 6 a.m. on the 15th here. And this is temperatures in the low 20s. The Euro has a deeper intrusion here and really a colder temperature here, but it looks from what I'm seeing like that's probably the coldest we will get. I'll also say that both models have this being a pretty brief event, so not the two-week event we had back in 2021. So what we're seeing is the fact that, yeah, we could have a pretty deep intrusion of this cold air. Of course, sub-zero temperatures overnight into the early morning across uh, all the way from Washington on through the heartland up into the Midwest. So very, very cold temperatures there. But as far south as Texas, yeah, I mean, Oklahoma, you're looking at temperatures in the single digits, but really upper teens and 20s per the Euro model on the morning of the 15th. So that is one model, that's one model's thinking. We'll look at another one here. We'll look at the GFS model. This has it arriving closer to the 16th. So this is midnight going into the 16th. So this is several hours later. And really this is before the coldest of the air gets here, but this model doesn't quite have as deep an intrusion. You can see that really it's focused on uh, the Rocky Mountains and farther to the Northwest. So that's what the GFS model thinks and it doesn't really have us getting as cold. Really this has temperatures only dropping into about, I would say the mid to upper twenties. And that's not that far away from where we are now. I mean, we are looking at temperatures in our forecast, possibly in the upper twenties to low thirties. So the GFS model, if this happens, it arrives a little bit later and it doesn't get as cold. So again, until we have more consensus from these maps, from these models, we really don't have that great an idea of what to expect. Either way, we do have an impressive Arctic intrusion into the United States, but exactly how that affects North Texas, hey, we gotta wait and see. We gotta wait and see what these models do. And yeah, you know, it's the fifth today. This is 10 days out, so this is still farther away from the seven days that we usually will plug into the forecast and then getting even beyond that, the fact that, hey, these can change even in seven days. So the moral of the story, stay tuned.